love you, Mommy. Our mom taught us to be beautiful on the inside because she says we're already beautiful on the out. We, we love, love you, Mom. My mom is the kindest person in the world and I love her. She's also nice. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mom. When I think of my mom, I think of someone who loves their family and will do anything for them. My mom has teased me about Jesus. I'm sorry for swimming my sister with water. My mom is really, really smart. She knows what's best for me, even though I don't always know. My mom taught me not to be selfish and to be a kind and good girl. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mom. My mom has taught me to always work hard. My mom has taught me how to be a hard worker and a better person. My mom has always taught me to love others. I love you so much, Mom. Brooklyn, what is something your mom has taught you? Um, to be kind to my brother. I love you, Mom. Good morning, Soteria! Welcome to, hopefully, LW, which stands for... Lord Whelan. This is our last Soteria Live. And we've had a good run, and we've had a lot of fun opening mm -hmm. up our time together. We certainly have, Brad. Oh, It's man. been a pleasure working alongside of you and having these people get to know more about... Your crazy antics. And you as well, Trent. And what a day to be able to end this this day on Mother's Day. A day to honor our mothers. Yes. Moms are great, aren't they? They are great. I love moms. We can honestly say without moms, none of us would be here. You're not kidding. Yeah. Very true. So, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. You know, I always reflect back when I think of moms to Kevin Durant's 2015 MVP speech mm. where he said, well, why don't we let Kevin tell us? Can we cue that up? Yeah. When you didn't eat, you made sure we ate. You went to sleep hungry. You sacrificed for us. You the real MVP. I think we could all agree with Kevin. That was good. Moms are the real MVPs, aren't they? They certainly are, Brad. But enough about us. Why don't we celebrate our wives who are also moms? Okay, how so? Well, they put together a little clip for us. Should we show that? That's right, they did. Sit back and enjoy this little number. This song is dedicated to Gardner, to Gideon, and to Gabe. It's called I Love My Mom. I love my mom, 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 I love my mom. If my mom tells me to clean my room, I clean my room cause I love my mom. If my mom tells me to wash my hands, I wash my hands cause I love my mom. If my mom tells me to be really quiet, I be really quiet cause I love my mom. If my mom tells me to brush my teeth, I brush my teeth cause I love my mom. 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 If my mom tells me that she loves me, I say I love you too cause I love my mom. If my mom tells me to eat my food, I eat my food cause I love my mom. If my mom tells me to be really quiet, I be really quiet cause I love my mom. If my mom tells me to play outside, I play outside cause I love my mom. 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 Hey. This song is dedicated. Wow, our wives are pretty talented, aren't they? They really are, and our kids are too. They really are. They do, wives do so much, and the kids, they mm -hmm. just love their mom. Yes, they do. Man. Wow. Well, what else do we have? Oh, you know what? 
I think moms are awesome. Moms are. But ultimately, we're not here to talk about how great moms are. We're going to honor them, which we've already been doing and will continue to do. Right. We talk about how moms can leave a legacy and currently what they're doing in this stressful time even. But we're here most of all to worship Jesus. That's right, so Brad. We're going to sing to him. We're going to pray to him. And we're going to uh, to uh, lift him high and honor moms at the same time. So, But I think you're forgetting one thing. What am I forgetting? CC. Connect card. Connect card, yes. We're going to do the honors this week. Why don't you pull that out? Sure. All right. Where do I pull it out? I don't know. We haven't pulled out the swan yet. Okay. There it is. Connect you know card. What to do. That's right. How can we pray for you? What questions do you have? And let us know you're here because we care for you. We love you. And seriously, we do look forward to seeing you in person again. All right. Hope to see you next Sunday. Good morning, Soteria, and happy Mother's Day. We're glad you've joined us for another edition of Soteria Live. Uh, We've been very careful during this time to not call this church because the church 
uh, is the gathered body, and I just want to uh, reinforce to you that we're excited to see you back, and Lord willing, next Sunday, we are working up a plan to meet in person again on May 17th. Stay tuned for details. We will get an email out. We'll get information out in any way we can to help you to know what to expect on Sunday, May 17th. But in the spirit of Soteria Live, where we're coming and bringing some scriptural truth, and because it's Mother's Day, we have a special edition plan here today with some singing, some testimonies, a panel discussion. And what would Mother's Day be at our church without some fun giveaways and some games? We've typically done that on Mother's Day, and we didn't want to uh, let you have a Mother's Day without that this year. So I'm going to hand it over to Trent and Lydia Hall, Pastor Trent, as they usually do the games. They're going to do some fun games here today and a special photo contest. And we just want to help you celebrate Mother's Day and make it a special day today. So Trent and Lydia, take it away. Good morning, Soteria. Happy Mother's Day. Absolutely. As you know, every Mother's Day, we always do a contest, and we're sorry we can't actually do that with you live, but we did have a photo contest online for you guys to submit your best and worst days of quarantine as a mother. And we had over 25 submissions of photos this year, and they were such a delight to look at. We just had they a great were. time. We had a really tough time narrowing it down. So we actually, we managed to do it. We narrowed it down to our top three faves and one honorable mention. Because That's it right. was tough. It so, was very tough. And yeah. let me remind you that the top three winners get a... West Elm picture frames. And I went and got some fluted marble ones. They're very, very fancy for your fancy pictures. All right. Let's go ahead and what are we going to start with? Let's start with our third for place. Third, third place. place is Terika Rieger. She did such a good job. She had masking tape out, her kids, she had Oreos, she had a pink bathrobe, but just lots of thought went into that. So My heart cool. went out for her. Yes, great job, Terika, and, yes. your, and your kiddos. That was really sweet. That's right. And then we have second place. Going to... The Frenches. The Frenches. They That's had right. so much fun. It looked like at the Linder Mansion. They had a chainsaw. They had... Toby holding Alex, they had laundry, they had Lori looking frazzled. Steam, look at that. Steam. That is some action, a lot of thought, a lot of work went into this. I am so glad that Phil is back home so he can take care of that. I know, oh. I'm sure he'll be helping Lori with that laundry, so. That's right. And, and her first, first place. place. Go ahead. Well, those nasty Nihilus kids really oh, took the cake. Oh, the nasty Nihiluses. Harry Nihilus. They had war Look paint. at that. They had a swing set. They had rope. It was lots of, lots of thought went into I that. sure hope Carrie has been freed from her children. I, I really hope so. And we also have an honorable mention going out to Anne Mead. I mean, she depicted that Shakespearean tragedy with such grace and depth like only a true mother could. So great job, Anne Mead. Great job. And for you to enjoy the rest of these, we're going to let these pictures play out. Thank you again for submitting those photos. It was awesome seeing those. You guys did a great job. We'll see you soon. soon. When I became a grandma, 
which by the way is the most wonderful thing in the world. <laughs> but if I wasn't, that was okay too because there's so many children that can be loved and, and hugged and, and taken under your wing even if you're not a grandma. But is that, I always heard the saying that don't, um, that with, grand, with grandchildren, you can love them and have all the fun with them and then you send them home and it's and you're, it's not your responsibility. That's the best part of it. So I found as being a grandma, it's a little bit more, and I don't know how to put it in words, but it's a little bit more of a responsibility laid on your heart, I think. And I don't know if that's any good, but that's boy, good. when Ansley came along and all these people keep telling you that, you know, it's, you know, you just, you love them and you play with them and you spoil them, which I never wanted to do, even though I do that. Um, uh, you know, and then you send them home and then it's not yours. So it's like, I never, I never got that. In fact, one day it was like, oh my stars, Jimmy. When I came home from after holding her, I was like, Oh my goodness, we have a huge responsibility here now as grandma and grandpa to pray for them and to be there for them and to be there for Jason and Julie. So I, if I could encourage all the moms out there, older and younger, to reach out to other moms in our church, um, that would be great. There are a lot of moms that are hurting. There's lots of moms that are in a good place, but they just need a little encouragement every once in a while. And it doesn't have to be that you come alongside them and um, take on a huge mentoring role. Just a little note card, even with a little piece of gum in it, that just says, hey, have a good day. Or um, maybe just getting to know the children and getting to know their names and then asking about the kids. and. And it just means so much to the moms, and you know, in our church, and and even people outside of our church. That it's just an encouraging thing that um, we can do, and especially the older, us older women in the church that uh, don't have the responsibility of the children anymore. Um, it's just a great thing to do, and you'll enjoy it. You'll love it. It's fun to get to know the families and watch them grow and see how they're involved in things. So. If I can encourage anybody as a mom to reach out to other moms um, to make them uh, feel special. When the, I tell the Sparks all the time that when you, you never know when somebody's watching you and somebody's going to look at you and go, I want that Jesus that they have. I want that person that they talk about all the time. How can I get that? So you never know. so thankful for a loving father we have let's sing this together he knows every shining star above and calls them each by name for the mighty mountains and the seas but the greatest gift he's given us is sending jesus christ and making him a substitute for
Soteria. So my name is Ashley Skinner, and I just wanted to share that God has been really generous to our family in the last year. Um, and I'm reminded of that especially now because it's Mother's Day, and it's my first Mother's Day to have a child. Uh, many of you know even that that's a huge deal for me because my husband and I battled infertility and miscarriage for six years. My husband and I are expecting our first child together, but it's been a pretty rough road to get here. Over the last two years, we've been faced with two miscarriages, the possibility of fertility surgery, and hormone supplementation. I knew after the first loss that if I didn't turn to the Word of God, I would never make it through with my faith intact. I did a miscarriage Bible study. I read and journaled through Hope When It Hurts. I went through the book of Job three different times, and I put together a playlist for when the ache in my heart became too much to bear. Um, so on a very practical level, one of the ways that um, God pruned me was by speaking through godly friends, especially the people in my small group. So I guess I just wanted to say that if you're going through a hard time uh, related to infertility or not, I just encourage you to seek out godly friends that can walk it with you. You know, when I started opening up and being vulnerable about the difficult stuff that I was experiencing, I noticed a change in my outlook toward my circumstances. And I noticed that I was actually being called on to encourage other people, even when I felt like I wanted to be served because I, you know, I was going through something hard. So give me encouragement, right? One thing that provided a lot of encouragement was attending the Soteria Women's Conference. It was there that I was introduced to another Soteria member who had experienced a lot of the same things that I had and was expecting her first child. Well, there were a lot of people, though, that were on the roller coaster of trying to start a family, and it actually strengthened my own faith and softened my heart when I was able to pour into them. So I just encourage you to seek that out. Through my time in God's Word and at Soteria, I came to the realization that I wanted a comfortable and easy life more than I wanted Jesus. And I started wanting a baby more than I wanted Jesus as well. But that's when my perspective started to shift. So um, during that infertility season, I learned a lot, but one of the big things that I learned was that God is still good and me going through hard times is not him withholding his goodness or withholding his generosity. You know, he is generous even when I don't have what I want. You know, he's always blessing and he's always merciful. Um, I'm blessed even in the middle of loss. You know, obviously I'm especially blessed because Jesus has paid my sin debt and I'm not a slave to death, but he also carries my sorrow and he carries my grief and that makes him trustworthy. So I need to let him you know, prune me with the hard stuff, as painful as that is, right? Um, In everything we've been through, God has been my strength, my peace, and my hope. He has shown me that he alone is my provider and my redeemer. Everything that he has allowed me to go through has been to draw me deeper into a relationship with, dependency on, and trust in Him. I know my Redeemer lives, and one day I will see Him face to face. Even though our prayers for another pregnancy have been answered, and things are going well so far, I know that the greater blessing is that my soul is secure in Jesus. Nothing I face can compare with knowing that when He returns, I will spend eternity with Him. Jesus truly is the greatest blessing we have will ever receive from God. Um, anyway, I hope that you have a wonderful day uh, remembering your moms and remembering how God has been and is being generous to you. Happy Mother's Day. would welcome me I was lost but he brought me and you know his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed I'm a child of God yes I Free and 
last he has ransomed me his grace runs deep while i was a slave to sin jesus died for me scripture reading today is Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays alert in vain. In vain you get up early and stay up late, working hard to have enough food. Yes, he gives sleep to the ones he loves. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, offspring, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons born in one's youth. Happy is the man who has filled his quiver with them. They will never be put to shame when they speak with their enemies at the city gate. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> We're excited to come to you on Mother's Day, not with a traditional uh, Mother's Day sermon, but we thought it would be just a nice change of pace to have a panel discussion with our pastors. And we are uh, missing one of our pastors, Pastor Scott Ward, and so you're stuck with the five of us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, we're not here to offer our great advice about mothering today. Uh, what we're going to do is just talk about our own mothers and give you their names, show pictures, and tell you some things that we learned, some things uh, that our moms impacted us with. So I'll go ahead and uh, get us going here today. Uh, my mom's name is Marsha Augsburger, and you can see her picture on the screen. And this is an old picture, obviously. I was a baby. She's holding me there. And what she taught me, I kind of relates to this picture because uh, I was really struggling to find a picture where she was just standing still. Hmm. And almost all the pictures that I found of her, uh, she was doing something and she was, you know, getting a birthday cake or, and there were lots of pictures with me hmm. with my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my mom's taken stills of my dad, but my mom was always in action. Hmm. And that really described my mom uh, as, a, as a person. She was a, a worker that way. It made me think of the text in uh, Colossians chapter 3, whatever you do, 
do it from the heart is something done from the Lord, not as for people, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ. And then it continues and says in verse 5 of chapter 4, act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of your time. And I, I think, as I think back, you know, I got this from my dad as well, but just being a person that is active in doing things. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, I, I have a problem sitting still. And no you guys way. have maybe <laughs> noticed that before. Breaking news uh, here. But, you know, I find at home, I'm sitting down, and I'm thinking, what do I need to do next? And I'm thinking back, that was my mom. Yep. The other thing about the picture in the background, there's a poem. It's from C.T. Studd, and it says, Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Mm. Yeah. And I just think that's, that's cool that it was in the background of that picture. Yeah. Because, as it says in the text, you serve the Lord Christ. Mm-hmm. I'm so thankful uh, that my mom taught me that kind of ethic and also was there to model what it looked like to serve Christ <laughs> in all those things as well. That's, that's great. great. That's special. Yeah. yeah. So who wants to go next? Jared? Sure. Yeah. Um, my n- mom's name is Marilyn, and uh, she she's a hoot. She's just one of the <laughs> funniest that's, people. That's the quote of the day right there. <laughs> she's uh, just one of the funniest people I know. Is she watching this? Yeah, uh, I like told that. her about Good. it, yeah, because I needed a picture. And uh, you see a, you'll see a baby picture of me, and the similarities between me and Eden are really clear. Uh, Eden turns one here in a couple weeks, but and my you mom still have the same cheeks. Yes, in that baby picture, the chubby, <laughs> chubby beautiful. cheeks from Those my are great. Those are from my grandma's side. Thank you. A little, more hair, yes. a little yeah. more hair on them now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Cody. Just a little. Not Thank much you. more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Trent. But my mom has just like one of the funniest, goofiest senses of humor, and I, I love that. And that. Um, that's just infectious. She's always looking uh, to encourage people. Um, one of the things that sticks out to me the most about my mom is just how much she loves people, no matter who they are or where they come from. Um, my mom shows no partiality. Um, when I read James 2 and it says, My brothers and sisters in Christ, do not show favoritism as you hold on to the faith in our l- glorious Lord Jesus Christ. My mother, she will just love people. I can look back at my childhood. I remember there being a time where our pastor at my home church said, there's this guy that needs a ride to church. Hmm. We picked him up, and it was the first time I really smelled like nicotine in my car because Hmm. this guy, uh, you can tell he just came from a rough background, but we gave him rides. He'd come back to our our house for lunch after church, and I remember him saying, like, it's so nice to not have to eat hot dogs and and beans out of a can. And I was, like, thinking to myself, like, wow, that's crazy. Um, my mom would care for elderly people. She does that for her job, but she also visits widows and shut-ins even now. And my mom doesn't look at people and say, I'm going to serve them so that later they can, you know, do something for me. She just loves people, and she gravitates towards the people that I sometimes tend to shy away from or try to honestly even avoid. Mm. Those are the people my mom runs to, and that's just a reflection of the love that she's been shown by God. And she just, that spills over into all of her relationships. what you're describing is you. Well, Mm -hmm. I want to be like that. (laughs) Like, I want to wake up and just do that. that. We all see those same things in you, which is cool. Absolutely. So we're privileged here at Soteria to have one of our moms as a member of the church. Yes. And that's Cody's mom. Yeah, it is. Uh, Her name's Carolyn. Uh, Many of you probably know her, Carolyn Krieger. Um, They've come here for years. Uh, I probably had a little bit to do with that yeah um, <laughs> i remember they, they, they weren't drive from they weren't driving from creston before uh, before right. that right yeah so um it's been so cool to have them as a part of the church um and my mom uh she encapsul- encapsulates um i want to start with the scripture here uh first peter three where it says wives in the same way submit yourselves to your own husbands so that if any of you of any of them do not believe in the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. We grew up uh, out on an acreage. We had some friends, some family friends that were Christians. We were not Christians. Um, My parents weren't um, when they got married. And these neighbors won my mom first through a neighborhood Bible study. That's great. Mm. That's awesome. uh, So we... Uh, the faith started. God uh, brought my mom to faith first, and 
um, as a result, brought our entire family to faith. Um, and it's a picture of um, First Peter. It, uh, I came to faith when I was a child. My dad came to faith when we were 18, when, when I was around 18 or so. And mm-hmm. it's just cool to see that God started a faith in my mom, and then she lived in a way that didn't push us away from the faith, but, yeah. but yeah. drew us to the faith. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. There's some that do the opposite. Yeah. And she's a great testimony of that. Yeah, she really beats uh, when you look statistically. Uh, usually, uh, we know that it can happen because of Scripture. It says it. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of times, uh, you look uh, fathers. Uh, you know, if they come to faith first, is it's much more likely. Yeah. But it's and your dad more. was baptized right here. Yep. In our church. Yeah. Right, yep. right behind you. <laughs> yep. Right behind me. You can't see it right now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah. So, how you doing, Zach? I'm doing great. Good. So instead of family worship and interviews and stuff, this is fun. Get to interact in a different way. Yeah. So uh, it, it's it is fun too. We've all met each other's moms, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, I've I've known uh, Cody's mom for a long time because uh, we were in college together. And yeah. likewise, Zach, I think I met your mom back sometime in in oh, college. And definitely. So tell us a little bit about your mom and what she taught you. Yeah. Um, my mom's name is Jeannie. Uh, she is now known more so as Grandma Jeannie now hmm. uh, by my kids and my uh, brother's kids as well. And uh, as I've been thinking about this question this week, as we've been talking about it, it's like, it's actually scary because I think, what are my kids going to say about me someday? And you stop to think, what will they remember about us? And uh, we think about all the things that we intentionally do for our kids and all the th- things we intentionally uh, want to teach them. And we don't know whether they'll remember that, but it's often the little things that are unintentional that have a really great impact on us. And I'm thankful for uh, the calm, um, content home that my uh, mom raised us in. Um, I'm thankful that uh, local church service was just a regular part of our life. Uh, it was a normal for us to get to church. If we weren't there 20 minutes early, we were late, and we were often one of the last families there. Uh, and watching my mom serve throughout the church in special music and VBS and Sunday school uh, for years is just uh, something I'm very thankful and want to build that into the culture of our home as well. Uh, according to the book of Proverbs, good parents, wise parents use not only the Bible, but they use other people and other uh, experiences to teach their children wisdom. And uh, without ever tearing anybody down, my mom could look at other uh, uh, families, other kids, and and draw attention and and, uh, teach wisdom from that and Mm -hmm. say, do you see what's happening there? Do you see uh, do you see that he's not really going to be happy with those possessions? Do you see hmm. that that dating relationship isn't going to work out well really and draw good. him to Christ? And uh, do you see that th- these things, uh, can you can you glean wisdom from that? And I'm really thankful for uh, the way my mom uh, would uh, just teach wisdom out of the little experiences of life. And I would pray that the just those little nuggets of wisdom can uh, grow and those proverbs can grow into wisdom and life. That's good. Mm-hmm. What you're talking about is a delicate balance, and you probably yeah. all have mm-hmm. experienced that as well, because yeah. that can easily tip to a judgmental spirit. Yeah. And when you're looking at other, you know, you mm-hmm. say, "Well, we don't want to be like them," you know, yeah. that type of thing. And you're teaching no. the opposite yeah. of wisdom to really uh, look at people through different mm-hmm. light. Goes back to what you were talking about, not looking at people yeah. differently, treating everybody the same. And so that's great uh, that balance of trying to do that well and do it in a wise way, and not mm-hmm. uh, teach inadvertently teach judgmentalism. Yeah. 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 So it's good stuff. Trent? Sure. Yes. Uh, my mom's name is Lois Hall. Hi, Mom. I'm on TV. I love you. <laughs> hey, we, s- we said we, y- if, if you did that, <laughs> yeah. now we all have we to do that. We look bad now, too. Yeah. I know. You made us all look bad. So here we go. Ready? Ready. Hi, Hi, Mom. Mom. Hi, Mom. I'm on all TV. Right. <laughs> Stop it. That's my line. <laughs> um, my mom, there's a couple of things that stand out with my mom. Um, one of the things that stand out to me is she's a very hard worker. I don't ever remember a time where I just saw her lazing around doing nothing. She always kept jobs, cleaning churches, being a secretary at a church. Um, she was a very hard worker. Not only was she a hard worker, she taught us to work hard as well. I think every Saturday morning, I had to clean the living room and dust every side that was imaginable. I mean, she was adamant about me dusting everything in the whole house. This was once a week? Once a week. Wow. Yep. 
all the kids listening in today. They yes. Need to this is a good chore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I knew that was my job. And she, she always had a list of chores for me to do before I could go out and, and play. And, and it, was a, it was a long list. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that because it taught a good work ethic. Um, another thing that stood out to me as well is she was diligent in teaching us uh, the word. And there would be times where my dad was maybe gone for an evening. And she took advantage of that and gathered us kids together, had a Bible maybe as a devotional Bible, I can't remember, but she would read that out loud to us, and I enjoyed it. I loved it. And even before going to bed, she was pretty consistent with uh, teaching us scripture and, and reading a little devotional as we were laying in our beds. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Well, it's fun to uh, kind of talk about this, and uh, we're going to move into a new segment now of the conversation. We're going to talk about what we didn't appreciate about our moms. And, Jared, you're going to start us out with this one. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> Pass. <just laughs> <laughs> uh, no number deal. one, I couldn't resist doing that. And secondly, pointing out Jared, making yeah. Jared <laughs> be the <laughs> one. Yeah. Just, just to see, oh, his, I wanted to see that. his face. Yeah. You know, that, that's what, that's what's so like, much uh, fun about I was like, this wasn't that. what we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> just to see the wheels turn for a mm, second on that But seriously, one. do you have one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <right>. I'm good. <laughs> Oh, man, that's fun stuff. Yep. Well, anything else today, guys? Any uh, other encouragements for, for moms out there? I, I, this has been a really tough time, mm -hmm. I know, for a lot yeah. of moms. And, and it, you know, the normal duties of mom, they're getting dumped with, in some cases, having your kids home more than you were used to and everything changing up. And mm -hmm. uh, we have some all-stars yeah, in, in our church, and uh, we're, we're all married to some all-stars. Absolutely. We're so thankful. Yep thankful for moms take time call your mom today yep Face start your grill the grand make a really nice steak for your wife yes. if you yeah. can yeah nope. is steak her choice i think i think that well i think she's gonna want a uh, hawaiian patty that's what uh, her a hawaiian patty. Yes. hawaiian patty. fairway ha hawaiian patties i think they're paying me on the side to do a commercial now <laughs> well we, um, we usually but have mentioned yeah. some business theory, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, so, life, so those are pretty what that, is that's a hawaiian a, the patty? love language in our house like uh, a patty or something? no it's like um ham with pineapple and uh cheese in it all yeah it's, it's, it's fantastic. already made yeah go to fairway today and get yeah. your hawaiian <laughs> <patty>. fairway's <laughs> the place <laughs> wow that's good What's your choice? Uh, what's your wife's choice? My or wife's not a steak person. She just likes a really good piece of chicken. And then I'm doing, I got a cast iron skillet for Christmas. So we're getting together with her mom, and we're going to do uh, a skillet cookie with a scoop of ice cream on it, like uh, a big chocolate chip cookie. Sounds good. Yeah. Nice. Uh, if we do something at home, we love, uh, we love taco, like uh, – street tacos doing okay. something on a mm -hmm. smoker but i think we might do something takeout we're still trying to hammer that out she li loves bubba oh like yeah bubba's good yeah my wife's not a big meat eater but she cannot resist my burgers so nice i think we'll do yeah that. my wife's pasta oh nice so doing something special like that with pasta you make it uh <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it not <laughs> okay no that that wouldn't necessarily be a gift <laughs> uh if i if i made yeah, you know, some pasta. So uh, I'm going to carry out from Biagi's. If you'd like a great place to go for Mother's Day, <laughs> Biagi offers a full <laughs> spectrum of great family packs. They're called Pronto Packs. <laughs> so call Biagi's today and make your reservation. <laughs> there we go. Get another plug in today. Yes. Nice. You know, so that ought to be fun. Yeah. Uh, it's good. And it'll be, a, it'll be a nice, you know, less busy day, I yep. feel like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. tomorrow. So it's fun. Well, moms, we love you, and we're so thankful for all of you, and uh, it's good to be together today, and we hope that we could bring a little bit of light and some encouragement into your life today, and uh, just continue to, to press on and trust, Lord, uh, for this time. Let's pray together as we close this up today. Uh, Lord willing, close this up as our last mm -hmm. Soteria Live. Mm -hmm. Uh, so stay tuned. We will give more details out hopefully next Sunday, May 17. We're going to be meeting together uh, in, in some form. We don't know exactly what that looks like or how we're going to do it yet. Um, and we're hoping maybe the governor comes out with some more news on Monday just to help us shape that. We're not, we're not dependent upon that, but we just want to uh, be respectful of those things. So uh, just l stay tuned to the email, Facebook. We'll get the information out as it comes available. So let's pray together. And just thank the Lord for our moms today.
Father, thank you for the chance we've had to just converse a little bit and talk about what we appreciate about moms. We are thankful, Father, that you give us relationships, that we have the gift of relationships. And uh, Lord, I know for me, as, as I get older, I realize that the most important thing in life are relationships. Uh, that, that we take we take those with us when we leave here, uh, that those are eternal, Father. And most of all, our relationship with Christ is, is most important. And then uh, the relationships that you give us, and Father, we, we recognize too that we enjoy who you are uh, through relationships. And that is one of the ways to enjoy you is by enjoying your people. And what a blessing it is for so many people to have moms that are believers and father i pray a special prayer here today for those that have moms that aren't believers that have moms that are not a great testimony of what it looks like to be a a good mother and i pray for them today as maybe mother's day is a hurtful day and a painful day to remember some of those things pray for those that mother's day is painful because there's a desire to have children and you have not granted uh, that that prayer request yet father we pray for a special measure of comfort for moms that are in that position today and ask that you would be close to them, Father. Help them to know that you are still God even through a difficulty like that. Father, thanks for the chance that we've had to continue to come to our people, uh, not as church, but to come to our people in this format to just bring some light, some scripture, some teaching, uh, some opportunity to connect online. We thank you for those gifts, Lord. You are so good to us. And we just want to thank you most of all for the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.